Hello, my name is David Madden, Senior Director of Business Development at Talas, and today we are here with Eddie Glenn, Senior Product Marketing Manager at Venify, to do a talking trust session on securing the software supply chain with Venify and Talas. And this is a vital topic for our customers as Venify and Talas provide a turnkey solution for automating the management of machine identities in complex supply chains. So let's start first maybe with a question, Eddie, that is sure to be on people's minds. What is the software supply chain and why is this important to, to customers? Hey Dave, it's great to be here. That's a, that's a good question. So software supply chain, uh, if you think about your business, um, you, your business might be using, or I shouldn't say might be, your business definitely is using software. It's either um, software that you use for your accounting systems or software for your internal databases. But most companies now are offering types of software for the products that they sell. And the software supply chain is, is basically all of that software that's uh, needed to keep your business running. So it might be software that you've developed. It might be software that your company uses that accounting package that you've purchased from someone else. Uh, it might be open source library software that your development teams are using or commercial libraries that your software development teams are using. But software supply chains impact all of us. I, I can't think of any business out there that doesn't either use software to run their business operations or develop software because it's part of their, their product. That makes sense and of course, I guess one of the big ones uh, that involves software supply chains is solar winds as a software supply chain attack. And it sounds like uh, you've done a lot of research into this area at Venify. Can you share with some of the key findings? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great example of, of how vulnerable our software supply chains are. And uh, uh, it, it really, is, it's amazing when Venify did do a deep dive analysis on what happened with solar winds. We don't have any inside information. This is all just from publicly sourced information. But just in a nutshell, what happened is that uh, in December of 2020, um, it was announced that uh, a product from SolarWinds called Orion had been infected with malware that then infected other uh, uh, SolarWinds' uh, customers. So it was like a, a dual kind of attack. And it was about 18,000 customers that, that were infected even though the attackers were only targeting a subset of those. And it ranged from uh, government entities like Department of Treasury, Homeland Security, so you know, really important government agencies, as well as small, medium, and extremely large businesses you know, with, with well-known brand recognition, as well as state and local governments. Um, but it was an eye-opener for us that you know, we, we know that hackers are constantly you know, trying to get malware in, but the level of sophistication, and we'll dive into this in a little, little, little bit, was, was pretty amazing. It's it's true. As you're, you're revealing this, you realize how broad this was. So maybe, Eddie, can you share a little bit more about how was this attack different from past attacks and how does it impact the, the software supply chain? Yeah, so right now I'm showing a diagram of a, a DevOps pipeline. So, you know, DevOps is kind of the, for those that aren't familiar with software, it's the new way that people are developing software to get product out to market quicker and as well as... Um, uh, being able to introduce new features as quickly as possible. And, you know, people, you might have heard terms like digital transformation, cloud native, all of these things are kind of related, but really, you know, what's going on is that developers are just doing a lot extremely quickly and it's, it's iterative. So when we think about traditional malware attacks, um, usually it happens after a developer has created their source code or created their product and they've started to distribute that product. And then hackers will sometimes uh, try to insert malware at that at that particular point, and and we have ways of protecting against that. Uh, things like code signing uh, is very useful to help ensure for for end users to ensure that the software that they're running and that they're installing on their computers is from the trusted vendor that that they have the relationship with, and that it hasn't been modified by a third party. So that's how code signing has worked in the past, but this is what's different about. Uh, what happened with with uh, solar winds and, and sunburst is the, the actual name of the attack is that the attackers went into the stream well before uh, what we typically see for when malware gets asserted so they targeted the build systems of the software development teams 
And if you're on the security side of the house and you know that's what your business is, you might you know be thinking you know I've got things well protected you know you know down here because I'm doing code signing, but you might not have visibility into into what your development teams are doing up here during you know their their software development activities, and that's where uh, Sunburst was was very different. The attackers uh, broke into the build infrastructure. They inserted some malware into the source code. No one knew it. The engineers built their product like they always do. They released it. It got code signed, and then it got pushed out to customers. And this is where it really gets scary, is that the hackers weren't really after SolarWinds. They were after some of SolarWinds customers. So right. when, when they installed the software uh, in their environments, basically opened up a back door that allowed a different set of hackers to come in and then target those agencies like like Department of Treasury. Incredible. So a different set targeted a known attack uh, early on in the code process. They knew about that vulnerability and then they came in and targeted them later in the uh, the DevOps lifecycle. Right. So, you know, if, if I'm an InfoSec, uh, I'm really concerned about this because a lot of infosec people do not have that visibility into what's going on in development. And I'm an old developer. I mean, that, that's what I started my career doing is, is I know that there is that kind of separation between developers want to do things fast because they have right. a lot of pressure to get product out. Security wants to keep everything secure, right? And uh, it really becomes important that, that these two teams have to, to work together. Right. So, so then Eddie, what do businesses do to help prevent this from happening to them? So there, there are a couple of things, and uh, I'm going to kind of talk, talk at the high level first. So effectively, you don't want to rely on just one security measure. So, you know, we talked about, we looked at the diagram, and normally code signing happens, you know, after the software gets built and before it gets pushed out to where customers can interact with it or download it. And that's something that we don't want to do is, is that's one security measure. Instead, we want to have multiple security measures. Right. Also, hackers are jumping left. And when I say jumping left, they're jumping further into the development stream. So it could be that your developers aren't aware of what's, what's happening. So as, as a security professional, you need to work really hand in hand with your development teams to make sure that more security measures are added in uh, to the development process. And then you want to digitally sign artifacts throughout the development stream. So what, what do I mean by that? Let's say a, a software develop, a development team has downloaded an open source package. And they run it through the security scans and they know that you know this software is safe, it's free of malware. Well, before they check that into their source code repository, they really should digitally sign that. So when, when I say digitally sign, I mean they should code sign that. Right. Next thing is that the keys and the certificates that are used for digital signing, they always have to be secure. I think what you know what we saw with solar winds is that it's possible that those keys were not secure, and that's how. Uh, they may have been accessed uh, during that particular breach. So, yeah. And, uh, so and now, this kind of, yeah, so go ahead. What was your question? Yeah, so, so now, so that's the business side. So now from a software perspective, how do these teams kind of do this more specifically? Yeah, so, and, and this is where I think uh, we, you know, it's really important to give some visibility to this, the security folks out there. So this is just a typical, pipeline, a software development pipeline. Your company's pipelines might look different. Even different software teams within your company might have different pipelines. But what the really the, the important thing to take away here is that there are multiple security controls throughout that pipeline. And sometimes your developer development teams might think about you know, what those security controls should be. Sometimes they might not think about that. And that's really where it's important to, to collaborate with, with those security teams. And uh, there are a number of steps that you know, if I were on the security side, I would recommend for our for your development teams to, to take. One would be you know, to have individual contributors to sign source code before they submit it. So let's say I write a, a piece of software and, and it's source code. I submit it into my source code repository. Who's to prevent someone else from coming in later after me and changing a few lines and adding some wet malware in or opening, opening up a port? If I digitally sign it with my own personal signature, then that's going to prevent others from coming in and modifying that afterwards. Obviously running security scans on third party components. So if you use open source packages, libraries, software development tools, those should all be scanned first to make sure there's not existing malware in it. And then once you scanned it, then you should sign it with your own certificate. Um, 
don't allow uh, unsigned or unscanned tools to be used in your build environment. Um, if you do, it's, it's very possible that those, those tools can have malware already there and you, you wouldn't know it. The, the next point here I think is really important, and that is to, to consider using ephemeral build servers. And what do we mean by that? Yeah. Um, you know, in, in the old days when I was developing software, you know, we had a, a build server in some, you know, locked up room. And, you know, we would put our source code in it. We would run a script on that server and it would pop out, push out the, the actual finished software product. And that is kind of an example of a static server. What we're seeing everyone move to is something that we're, we call ephemeral build servers. So th these are basically build servers that only exist for the duration of the build. They don't exist any other time. And what's the advantage of that? Is if they don't literally exist, so let's, and let's think, you know, maybe they're spun up in the cloud, then no one can break into that build server, right? right. So, so that's why you really wanna create it just for as long as you need it to build your software and then delete it basically until the next time you need to build your software. And then the last point here is just constantly be checking for uh, valid digital uh, signatures. And you know what? what I'm going to anticipate what you you may have another question of of how can Talus and and, and Venify help with that? So yeah. I'm going to put that into your mouth, but maybe you have a different way to phrase that. Yeah, I guess Eddie, I'm curious as I listen to all this. This is great for software developers, but what happens if I don't develop software for my business? How can I make sure I'm protected as well? Okay, good, uh, good question. Uh, again, it's if you use software that you download or you know it's it's sent to you, run it through security scans, and then once it's run through security scans, even though it's already been digitally signed by the vendor, add your own digital signature to that. That yes. way, everyone within your company knows that that your security team has checked this piece of software. And not only that, you can configure all of the the computers within your network to only run execute software that has been signed with your own personal or your own company's digital signature. So that that's how I would, would approach that. Okay, well, this is great. So maybe if you can describe now, how does this all work together? Can you give us some guidance? Yeah, so one of the things that, you know, I've, I've mentioned now several times is signing digitally, digital, a digi digi digital signature, using a custom digital signature for this purpose or that purpose. And, and what does that mean? It means that now your company has a lots of co-signing certificates that they need to manage. And this is where we really have the power of Venify with Talus. Uh, Talus is, you know, Talus Luna is great for keeping those, those private keys extremely secure. That's only one component of security that we need to take into account. The other component is how do we secure the access to the private keys that are stored in, in Talus Luna? And when I talk about access, I mean, there should be a set of measures in place that says, only in these circumstances should this particular person be authorized to be able to access that, that particular private code signing key. In this particular circumstance, it requires approvals from these five other people. You know, maybe it's a, a QA person that knows that it's run through all the internal tests. Maybe it's a security person that knows that it's been checked for malware and that there is an approval process that's been put into place. And Venify can help with that by a lot, providing a framework that allows you to automate that that approval process, not to mention not only to mention uh, the framework that allows you to manage the the code signing certificates and keys and the life cycle of those. Great, and and this is this really is a vital topic for our customers, you know, because Venify and Talus together coming together to provide a turnkey solution for automating the management of machine identities for signing code in complex supply chains is, it couldn't be more timely, right? I mean, with the solar winds you've described, and you know, this isn't the first time people have attacked the code, you know, whether it's at a software side or just within an organization, you know? And so, you know, putting this in the context of the digital pandemic, our friends at IDC have found that teams practicing accelerated application delivery, you know, DevOps for new services were in a much better position to use software innovation and agility to impact the organizations as a response to the crisis. This allowed you know, these companies to roll up new software and digital services based on DevOps and agile processes in a much shorter time and help drive their shift from a, you know, a product to a digital business. And of course, the, the key point to all this is as long as they protect the digital assets correctly, 
And this is really where, you know, Eddie has described today, Venify and Talos can help working together. So thank you, Eddie, for taking the time to share your insights into the threats impacting the supply chain and how we need to rethink how we're implementing security, machine identities, and their whole impact on digital transformation on business. Please see the links that uh, we have in the slide below to get more details on how Venify and Talos can help secure, automate in, uh, your supply chain. And I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe. And thank you again, Eddie, for joining us today. Thank you, Dave.